So I just got done doing the hand clean up here. You have to realize that silicone doesn't stick to silicone, or the RTV won't stick to RTV. You gotta make sure that the surfaces are clean. Uh, and all these little channels here, that's gonna help form a gasket, okay? Um, these, uh, mo most imports, they don't use a gasket for the pan and such. They just use silicone or RTV, and that's it, they call it a day. So, we wash this out a couple times. I'll, I'll flip it upside down again. Try to wipe out all the grit and debris that was in here. And the same thing, I just got done doing the bottom of the uh, engine, the block, so it's all scraped clean. I don't have anything um, keeping this from sealing nice and flat. Okay. Um, so you can see here the, the area that I used for, ooh, there's something in here. Just a silica. Uh, the area that here that was threaded that I used that I uh, pushed a bolt through and this again helped pull this away from the block that was my initial starting point along with the little pry po points here I did not want to go and try to mess up this edge this is a flat ceiling edge okay and the dowels were like probably the hardest part to pull out this sections up against the bell housing so not only did you have corrosion against here which reminds me I still gotta clean the surface I didn't do a good job there I did not do a good job there um, yeah so I gotta clean the surface make sure that's good on this side I can actually use just a, a fluid film or some kind of anti-corroding anti-rusting thing even though this is just a cast cast aluminum it'll help keep it from like sticking and, and binding uh, aluminum loves to corrode itself together so that's where we're at uh, torquing this on once I put the RTV I'm gonna as soon as I get this on have it ready to go and put it right up torque spec is about 7 to 9 PSI, uh, PSI. 7 to 9 foot-pounds okay yeah 7 to 9 foot-pounds so I, I like to do that with the torque wrench uh, I just feel better that way. I know we can do it wrist tight, but because it's just gasket maker, I prefer to use a tor torque wrench. So there you have it, guys. And I might take you underneath and show you what we got. Okay, so here we see I have the entire surface cleaned underneath. Uh, so far all I did was scrape it off. We still got to go ahead and just do a final clean down, okay? Wipe down with the... Uh, brake clean and such so we'll go ahead and take care of that and we'll have as soon as we have all this pristine and clean at the very last minute we put on the RTV on the pan have the torque wrench ready to go seven to nine foot pounds and put it right up so it has the best sealing capability possible okay and I'm also going to remove the dipstick uh, or at least stick it up a little bit so it doesn't hinder me from lining everything up uh, and that's it so we'll we'll go from there and continue on all right so we got the new exhaust on uh, I mean the new exhaust gasket on everything's torqued there's another bolt right here which goes into the aluminum so be careful about over tightening that um, I zip tied the cable here because I didn't want to hitting the axle that was for the O2 sensor that's plugged in, ready to go, and the hold down for the grommets are back in. So be sure we have everything in place. And this thing only has 77,000 miles on it. I am so surprised. I thought it was about 100,000, and I can't believe the condition underneath and everything. Look at this frame. Solid. Solid. And we're in the rust belt. This thing is like yep, got 04. Can you believe how clean this thing is? So I just, you know, wanted to add that. Sorry. <laughs> all right, and then we'll go ahead and finish up the top. We got to put all the accessories on and bring the alternator in here, and uh, go from there. One of the things you got to do is 
write down when you do a timing belt. Uh, sometimes the kits will give you a label to go ahead and put on top of the timing cover. In this case, we didn't get one, so I put it on top of the valve cover. Uh, date, mileage that it was done, uh, that the wood pump was done. So the next tech knows uh, at least, you know, it wasn't a half assed job. Uh, then right now we're going ahead and putting in these, this part of the motor mount here and then we still got the other plate that goes across the motor mount, the rubber piece, the hydraulic portion and then also the power steering pump uh, and then I can go ahead and, and jack this up higher so we can get the alternator in there which I almost forgot which is why I didn't do that yet. Um, doesn't matter anyway because that battery has got to be charged and the customer waited to the last minute to go ahead and charge it. So. Oh, it's quick charge. Sorry. It's quick charge. It's quick charge. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's where we're at right now. Uh, that's what I'm doing at this point. <laughs> okay, I have all the belts on. The motor mount and everything is done. Got just tighten this up a little bit on this end. All the other bolts are tight. We're putting down the uh, power steering reservoir. You know, tighten that up. I had to do a final, final tighten on the water pump pulley, but for the most part, they're, they're quite snug. Um, and that is it. I re-plugged in the sensor that was over here that I unplugged to gain access. And tomorrow I'll, I'll go ahead, or when I come back, I'll go ahead and finish with the alternator, tensioning, burping the system, and I guess that's it, because everything else is done. Um, so I hope you guys, I hope you found this informational, educational, helpful, and all that good stuff. Um, I might bring you back on for the final startup, I guess. Okay, we have this torque to uh, 125 to 135 for pounds. Uh, one of the things I had to do was get a, another washer here. Uh, I also just put on the AC tensioner uh, belt here, or I'm sorry, the, the pulley, okay, and then we got to go ahead and adjust this, get that done. Um, I have a jack stand, I know you see the jack here, but I do have a jack stand underneath, okay, so I am practicing safety, I just want to have that as a precaution. Um, okay, so I have this, I had to remove the power steering I'm sorry, the alternator belt, just to be able to get a better bite, to be able to tighten this down. Uh, so I'll be putting that back on. I have to adjust this, tighten that, put the alternator back on, uh, the alternator belt back on, tighten that, go above, tighten motor mount, and then I'll remove the oil pressure sensor because I want to verify oil pressures on this thing. Uh, this had a huge leak with the oil so we want to make sure that nothing was damaged in the oil system with the bearings or anything like that I know there was no noise but that does not guarantee uh, there was no damage done so well we have the system burping I'll have the WPS 500 hooked up in the port where the oil pressure sensor goes and I think that's it for now So we're working here uh, on the Hyundai still, okay. Uh, everything's all put together, put them out and everything's all tightened up. Everything, mechanically speaking, is all back together. The only thing we gotta do is burp the coolant system. And right now I have the PicoScope hooked up. I have voltage hooked up, okay, to the PicoScope up here, two channels. Using voltage, I'm gonna do a relative compression check. I want to check, uh, and then using uh, cylinder number one for trigger to find out how we're doing as far as relative compression, just for shits and giggles. I wanted to really do a, come closer, come around, over, over, over. I really wanted to pull out 
the oil pressure sensor right there, okay? Why? Because I wanted to check oil pressure on this thing, only because of the fact of, of the issue we had prior with the leaking. And I wanted to make sure there was no internal damage. Um, so this is just an added test. I wanted to see what, what it was in case there's any other kind of damage done. And I'll have this uh, as far as my own uh, reference. Now one of the odd things I had going on with this, as soon as I connected negative battery terminal, uh, the car would automatically go into a remote start uh, feature. So before I even connected the negative terminal, I had already disconnected the fuel pump relay on here. If you look, the second one in, fuel pump, and that's the second one in right here, fuel pump relay. It's a good thing because for some reason this thing went into an automatic starting sequence for the remote. Uh, I think it has some kind of aftermarket remote system. Very, very odd. So, so I just wanted to mention that. And then we'll go ahead and do a relative compression test. Let me go ahead and translate in Spanish and then I'll do the test. One thing I wanted to add, see? One thing I wanted to add was I had the, the customer sit in the vehicle uh, and put his foot in the brake in order to connect the negative post on the battery. This prevented the vehicle from doing its cranking and attempting to start thing. So that's how I got around it. That's how I got now the battery terminal on there. It's not tight, it's on there. So we'll go ahead and do the relative compression test now. So here I am recording uh, with the Pico scope. I'm gonna do a voiceover because there was a lot of horsing around and stuff said. I'm setting up channel A to be plus or minus 20 volts. So we're checking battery voltage for the relative compression and channel B uh, about two volts because we're using the capacitance lead on number one cylinder and then I'm going to go ahead and raise each channel to 11 bits for a clearer waveform less noise some of a filter I suppose then my sample rate to nine uh, million samples per second, or nine million samples, I'm sorry, and, and then I'm going to use a higher time base, 500 milliseconds per division, so we should be able to catch a decent amount of detail. I'm going to invert channel A, so it's something that I recognize more so, and then I remove the initial channel A because it, it's voltage, regular voltage. So I inverted it to make it look more like amperage. And then we'll go ahead and crank the vehicle. And any second, there we go. Cranking the vehicle. Although you see it started to start, it was extra fuel in the system. So we recapture it. He's cranking. And stop. And now the Pico's catching up. And there we have our waveform. So the top is our sink on cylinder number one. And the bottom, the blue, is the voltage, which is inverted. And I'm going to raise the scaling so that it is more amplified and the humps are more easily seen. I'm saving this image only because of this video. I don't really need it for my own uh, records or anything. So. This is why I'm saving it with a very general title. And then here I'm talking here I'm talking to the customer. And I'm explaining to him what we're seeing. He's also a technician, so I'm explaining you know what we're we're doing and what we're seeing here. Uh, let me see. I'm pointing to number one cylinder, the the trigger and that this is an ignition event. That spark is occurring every time on those red spikes. I bring in cursors just to align and, and give them a more visual view of uh, the four cylinders. And there we go, four cylinders, four cylinders. Don't worry about the 360 degrees. I know it's 720. This is just to help setting up uh, some columns for him 
I'm going to zoom in on the one uh, cycle of ignition. Here we go. We're going to zoom in. And then I split it into four columns so we can see each cylinder. One of the four cylinders. One, two, three, and four. And then back to one. I'm showing him where the spark event is occurring. And how do we know what cylinder is what? We use the firing order. We know which one is number one, which hump is number one. Using a firing order, then we can decide or figure out what the other humps are, what cylinder they correspond to. And this is what I was trying to tell him. Let's say there was a dropout in one of those cylinders. We can easily detect what is a problem cylinder. We have it running, it's all started up, all sounds good. I just got done, uh, if you actually want to look at the computer there. I did the relative compression check, just for shits and giggles. Uh, it's synced with number one cylinder, I'll show in a screen recording of that, come back. So right now we're in the process of burping the system. We gotta get all the air bubbles and everything out of there. But the biggest factor, we have no leaks. There's no leaks anywhere, so that's number one. So we can go ahead and bring this thing down and have it run. So I'm good, I'm happy with this. Uh, so we'll go ahead and finish burping up the system and then I hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, of almost everything listed, I tried to get most of what I could. We had torrential rain and everything else, so I mean, I couldn't get every freaking step. But hopefully, you guys found this helpful. So, thanks for watching. One of the things we gotta do whenever we do a time belt is to mark mileage and a date, and the fact that it was done, what kind of work was done. And I am accidentally pressing this button live. My bad. Cranking, but even before I started this thing, I pulled a freaking fu uh, relay. I pulled the relay. Oh. And even before I started this thing, I pulled the relay. In in. How do you say that in English? In preparation. Okay. So before we even connected the, the battery terminal, I had already pulled the fuel pump. <laughs> it is a bit of blue girl. And I'll show you what we're looking at. 2.0. What was that fucking doing? Is that backfire? What was that Oh, it's just it trying to start. Like it's fuel it being ignited in the cylinder. So it's there's your ignition. Shape. Okay, so what do we, you need to explain this in very deep detail. Very.